Hi, I'm so glad you're investing your time with us. And like you know, my name is Reverend Kalai Washo, and I tell you what, it's getting more and more exciting watching what God is doing in the lives of people around the world. And just knowing that through some effort of personal development, people are beginning to get into the flow of, hey, I have to take responsibility for my life. I have to take responsibility for the things happening in my life. The days of blaming somebody else are gone. You know, you can blame your father, blame your uncle, blame your auntie, blame the devil and blame whoever you want to blame about your future, about your life, about how, you know, things are not working out for you. And I tell you what, you were wrong. Don't get me wrong. People influence us. People do things. But you see, you must stop the blame game. You must stop thinking it's somebody else who's, who's at fault. Somebody else is responsible for the way I feel. No, that attitude will take you nowhere. And if there's anything I've learned from the experts in the field of personal development is that you should understand real success has to do with R-E-A-L, relationship, equipping, attitude, and leadership. Relationship, equipping, attitude, and leadership. And I have another one right here, seven secrets to attain your dream. And this is secret number one, write it down. I won't tell you who this person is because you're, we're getting viral and we're recording this. Secret number two, align your goals. Secret number three, set performance goals to reach your outcome goals. And secret number four, embrace failure. <laughs> secret number five, stop snowballing. And secret number six, create if-then plans. Uh, because I'm not, And secret number seven, make goal setting and achieving a way of life. So this is talking about how to achieve your dreams. Now we're ready to talk about personal development and, and, and success in life. Because that's what this mentoring process is all about, isn't it? It's to help you become who God wants you to be. To realize your potentials. To realize the great things that God has deposited in you. How are you going to develop them? That's what this is all about. You have to develop skills like time management, goal setting. You have to develop those skills. It is all your responsibility. Now, if you have been raised in a family or in a culture where all those things are already in you, happy are you. Start dreaming and start achieving the dreams. But if you've not been, then welcome, because you can develop them. I want you to know it's never too late to start. It's never too late. No matter how badly you've missed it in the past, no matter how bad things have been, if you're willing, you can start. And I'm told there's a Chinese proverb, I've never really confirmed it from any Chinese person, that when the student is ready, the teacher will show up. But what I can tell you is this, when you are ready to grow up, when you are ready to stop blaming somebody else, when you are ready to take responsibility, heaven will respond to you by helping you. And so maybe that's part of the help you're getting right now. Today I want to look at principles of life management. Because I'm still in, for me, I'm still laying the foundations, you know, because we get, before we get into some of these, you know, goal setting and dream your dreams. And I believe they're all aligned together, really, because it says align your goals. I like, I like such men. These are part of the people I, I read after, listen to them. And, you know, they write it down. Simple as that. Write your goals down. What are you going to become? What's your next five years going to look like? Write it down. So, but what if you fail? That's part of the process. What if it doesn't work? What if, I, what if somebody makes a fun of me because I wrote it down and I didn't achieve it? <laughs> now you're exposing the fears that are in you that will otherwise hold you down. Now that you set the goal, the fear is showing up. Now get rid of the fear and go for the goal. But today, like I said, I just want to concentrate on some stewardship principles like I, I have here that would help you. It's still the basic understanding that will lead you to appreciate the things we'll be talking about later. Number one. Everything we have was given to us by God. Now, that is a principle that will help you and deliver you from selfishness, deliver you from pride. Everything we have was given to us by God. Because in James 1, it says, all good and perfect gifts come from God. Now, you see, the reason why I'm sharing this with you is also because a lot of self-development or personal development materials out there are not Bible-based. Now, listen to what they did. They took the principles of success out of the Bible, left the God of the Bible alone, and the principles of God himself and how to relate with him are left out. That's why I've used the first two or three to lay the foundation of having a God focus. Now, here I'm telling you the first thing in stewardship principles for life management is everything we have was given to us by God. That in itself will deliver you from many things. Your very life was given to you by God. Your eyes, <laughs> your mind, 
everything about you was given to you by even your gift and your talent so you can check james 1 17 and you find that that's so important because it is out of this kind of wealth of knowledge that you can now set goals because now you know what has been given to you you know what you got so you can set a goal to achieve something with it and the creator is glad that you're doing something with what he gave you you know what you will always give him the credit the glory the honor because you knew from the start that he gave it to you number two Everything we are given has potentials in them. They can increase, multiply, and become greater than how we were given. So true. Everything we have came was given to us. Everything we're given has potentials. This is the beginning of self-development, personal development. This is the beginning of success principles. This is the fabric of success principles. The ones that the success gurus don't teach you. This is it. You're glad. I'm glad you're here now. You're listening to this. Everything we have been given has potential. In other words, does your mind have potentials? Does your body have potentials? Does your time have potentials? Does, I mean, your child has potentials. Your wife has potentials. I mean, think about it. Anything that you have been given by God is got great potentials. They can increase. You know, you can have a very wonderful home. <laughs> Depending on what you do with the potentials there. They can multiply. They can become greater than how we were given. Is that not good news? Who would give something and they would love to see you make it greater and better than the way you were giving it, if not the creator himself? Because that's the reason why I put the potentials in them in the first place. Number three, how we handle these things given to us will determine how we are rewarded or judged. Our ability to steward these things is the key to our success in life. Wow. Wow. I mean, I mean you know, we have different categories of life, our finances, our family our physical health, our careers, our ministries, our, just name it. Anything that we have has the potential to increase. And how we handle these things will determine how we are rewarded or judged. In other words, what outcome will come to us in life is determined by what we did with what we're given. I mean, that, that, should, just, that should just change your mind completely. Oh, I'm a pastor of a small church. That's a potential right there. That church has people with potentials. Your calling has potentials. Your gifting has potentials. But what are you doing with your potentials? Number four, we shall give account to our giver for how we related, treated, and utilized what we were given. Let me take a pause and have a drink of water if you don't mind. This is getting too exciting. <laughs> Can you see what I'm saying here? You and I will give account to God. Now, that's a very sobering thought. How we related, treated, and utilize what we're given. We'll give account. I'll give account. I'm giving account. I'm going to give account for the knowledge I have, the gifts of God in me, the teaching gift, and the ability to steward that gift to bring a blessing to you. And if you go ahead and become a blessing, more people are going to be blessed because I obeyed. I responded to the potential within me, challenged you, you respond to potential within you, now more life. And now God has been glorified. Number five, our respect for God, which is called our fear of God, will determine how we treat his gifts in our lives. His gifts are designed to bless many others, bringing fulfillment in our lives and bringing satisfaction to his heart. The glory goes to God, Proverbs 22, 4. By humility and the fear of God, our riches and honor and life. I tell you what, if you really have fear of God in you, you will treat with honor, with respect, the gifts of God in your life. Some people don't understand that even the ability to make money is a gift from God. Remember Deuteronomy 8, 18, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth. So when you talk about wealth, if you don't know how to link it up to God, that wealth can become your idol. And that's the reason why many have missed the mark, especially when they just went after success principles without a foundation in God. So, number six, the purpose of anything is usually in the mind of the maker. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. When things given are abuse, their potentials remain untapped, and the benefits derivable are lost due to ignorance of purpose. I remember sharing this some time ago and, you know, I cracked a joke about, you know, taking drumsticks to a woman in the village, you know, in an African or Indian village. You know, drumsticks are meant to be used to beat drums and all that. But the woman, because she's used to chewing sticks, thinks that the drumsticks are chewing sticks. It's called abuse. Why is it called abuse? Because that's not the purpose of those sticks. 
So when you do not know the purpose of the thing that you were given, you will abuse it. And the purpose is always and usually found in the mind of the maker, God himself. Number seven, our lifestyle should be determined by the recognition of the gifts, proper development and utilization of these gifts. So maximum benefits accrue to mankind and the creator is pleased. We are to manage our lives according to the expectation of the giver of these many-sided gifts, his wisdom, his grace, his talents, etc. You can see Proverbs 10, it's Proverbs 10, 4 to 5, and Proverbs 21 from verse 5. God is the source of all good things, and there are channels around us through which all these things come to us. I need to explain that. A lot of people don't know the difference between a source and a channel. What do I mean by that? You see, parents are channels for God to bless children. That's, that's, that's profound, you see. The, the parents are not the source. God is the source. Now, what does that do when the, a parent positions himself or herself as a channel under God to bless his child? His faith will be in God, and God will minister to that parent, give wisdom, whatever, divine ideas, so the parent has resources to take care of the child. God's name is glorified. The child is honored. The child feels God's blessings because the parent position and aligns well. I mean, that is profound. God is the source of all good things. And he uses, and there are channels around us. Some people think, well, you know, when I lose my job, my life has come to an end. No, no. God should be your source. Your job is just a channel. And you know what? There are many channels around. So in the part two of this, if you have the time to cover that, I'll tell you how to increase in everything and how to sustain increase. Remember that, Success or prosperity is from inside, not from outside. It's important you know that. It's an inside-out situation. A lot of people want to succeed externally without looking inward. No, it's inside first. Failure is a result of making wrong choices over time. Success is a result of making right choices and being disciplined to stay with them. Our choices are a product of the operating mentality of our lives. Our thoughts, perceptions, opinions, and desires are all inside us. Our self-image also matters. Our nature, nurture, and environment also affect us. The second principle of increase is called the law of sowing and reaping. Whoa. Everything obeys this law. We sow thoughts, we reap words. We sow words, we reap actions. We sow actions, we reap habits. And our habits... Are like the horses that take us into our future. The inputs we allow into our lives through reading and association will ultimately affect our choices in life. Reaction, repeated actions are known to form ingrained habits. It all starts with thoughts. When a person receives Christ and gets exposed to foundational truth as per what Christ has done for them, who they have now become, as well as the quality of our relationship with God the Father, such input will begin to condition such a person that they won't see themselves as they were before, but as new creatures in Christ. And they, you can now learn to give what you need. Sowing and reaping, it's an eternal, it's a, it's a principle. The Bible says that as long as the earth remains, sowing and reaping will never cease. So I want you to know that you must watch the thoughts you allow and all of that. Right, and now my time is going on and um, the, the, the last three things here, it says third principle is knowing God as your source. And the next one is preserving your harvest to know how you spend your money. You know, there's one thing to have a source, have a harvest, and know how to spread your harvest. Some people get a harvest and they don't know what to do, they just waste it. No, wisdom demands that you spend it well. So maintaining the flow calls for cultivating the lifestyle based on accurate knowledge on how issues operate. You know, and um, there are three things I will say here as I close on this term that Peter Paul addressed to his son Timothy about the three uh, professions that define the life of a Christian, farmer, soldier, and athlete. The farmer sows the right seeds to correct quantities. The soldier is at the beck and call of his government and is always battle ready. And the athlete remains ever ready as they prepare for competitions. In our lives, we need to know how to sow the right seeds in the right soils and right quantities. And we need to know how to resist the thoughts of poverty and all negative patterns in our lives. We need to stay spiritually fit for whatever challenges away does in life. Now, all of these are done in our stewardship principle set. You can lay hold on uh, the message of dawn on stewardship and you will be blessed as you listen. Until I come your way next time, I, I trust that you've learned a bit today and God will keep on teaching all of us. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the wisdom you're making available to us. Thank you because you are the source of every good thing in our lives. I pray for my listeners. Oh Lord, you will help everyone to lay hold on these principles that their lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. 
Amen.